it's just a lot of fun to do this. It's a great life to be able to do art. It's not like work to me, it's, it's more like play. I was born in Tahlequah and raised on my family's ranch. And I grew up on a dairy until I was about 12. And then my family sold the dairy and I went to raising strictly beef cattle. So I've been a farm girl all my life. I think that indirectly it did uh, contribute to me becoming an artist because I learned if, if something broke, I had to find a way to fix it. And we just learned to work with what we had. I grew up helping my dad. I like to be outside helping him with the tractors and the balers and the equipment and stuff. I like that more than being in the house. So I've been tinkering around with tools and making things pretty much all my life. And I was actually an art major in college. I didn't have art classes in school though. So I didn't really have any formal training. And when I got in college, my advisor told me I wasn't good enough to be an artist, so I should probably change my major. But I did, and I didn't really get into art again until probably late 2004, 2005. A friend of mine took me up to Bill Glass's studio and introduced me to Bill while they were working on the project for the passage at Chattanooga. volunteered on that project and worked with them for about four months until they completed it. And then I got to go back to Chattanooga, back where my ancestors left on the Trail of Tears. And my name is on a plaque on the wall there today. So it's kind of gratifying to have my name there when I know my ancestors had to leave there. So it's kind of a way of saying we're still here. Bill handed me a piece of fired clay and a brush and some red iron oxide. He shook my hand and said, here. He said, put five coats on here and brush it off between the coats. So that's pretty much how my ceramic career got revived. One thing Lisa is always full of ideas though. I mean, she's never lax. So. As soon as she comes in, she's got another idea already in her head. Bill is what got me back into art. Uh, I've had a lot of really good teachers, and I guess I've learned from the best. So I feel like I have come full circle since he is the reason I started doing the ceramics and pottery. I've been making feather capes since uh, probably 2010. Some of my Eastern band friends started wearing them. And I couldn't afford one, so I decided to try to learn to make my own. And I've made, I think I've made 22 or 23 capes since then. The capes go back. Uh, historically, DeSoto de described these feather capes. Uh, the men wore full length ones. Cherokee women were wearing them as late as 1762. And they're made on a hand tied net base and I sew a feather onto every knot in the net. So there's about 750 feathers in them. It's very labor intensive, time consuming. I spend a lot of time sorting those feathers. Uh, I want them to curve toward the back. So you have to sort them according to size and curve. It just takes a lot of time. I've made them for two Miss Cherokees. I've made a couple for some of the Eastern Band's Miss Cherokees, and I have some on the runway now and then. I've been in a few fashion shows. I work at the historic Merle home in Park Hill, and I work as a living history interpreter. I've always been interested in history and the historic arts. I want to know how things were made and I like to figure out how things were done. A lot of people say, oh, you're so talented, you can do all of these things. But when you, it comes to living history, well, what I do were things that everybody knew how to do. It wasn't considered art back then, it was necessity. 
but I enjoy it and I enjoy uh, working with kids and explaining to them how things are made. I've met a lot of interesting people. I got to travel to a lot of different places to do living history. I really hate to see things lost. I think it's important for kids to know how things are done and to learn. I grew up on a farm and I had horses and I was always outside. Kids today, I've, it's really sad. They don't know how to do the things that I grew up doing. It may look intimidating, but these are the steps you go through to make it. You can learn to do this too. So there's always, always something to learn.